Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to record a little introduction to the class video and kind of walk you through the structure of the class and also go over the syllabus and kind of go over how everything's organized and give you an idea of what to expect this semester. So hello, I'm Megan. I'm your instructor. I'll tell you more about me uh, specifically in a minute, but first I just want to get into how the class is structured. Um, because it's an online class, we're going to do everything through Canvas. So um, if you're not familiar with Canvas yet, that is okay. I'm going to walk you through how to use it and navigate it. But it is really important that you log into Canvas with some regularity to check in on the class and do the various tasks and things. It's also important that you check your OTC email, and we'll talk about that a little bit more too. Okay, so when you click on the class, this is um, Art History 2. So this is Art 105 dash, uh, let's see, what's our section? Um, WLS1, so this is a late start online Art History 2 class. Art History 2, don't tell my other students, is uh, probably my very favorite thing I teach at OTC. The drawing too is pretty close to, I, li I, I like all the things I teach. I love teaching drawing and art history and I teach all the different kinds of drawing and art history that we offer here. But I really like Art History 2 because we get to talk about Modernism, my favorite part of art history. Um, okay, so let's go through how this works. So when you go to your class, um, you come here and the home page is set to the modules page. And that's very intentional. I want you to navigate this class by the modules. In fact, I disable the assignments tab so that you don't have access to it because I do not want you to just go straight to where the assignments are because then you're less likely to look at the instructions, watch the lectures, and do all the things related to the assignments, and uh, it's no good. So navigate by the modules tab. And in the modules, they each have a header. They'll each have some information about different things that we're talking about in the class. Um, and they'll have the assignments all kind of organized nicely together. So we'll, we'll look at these more in a minute. Um, but for right now, let's go and look at our syllabus. So for the last, I don't know, maybe like two years or so, um, OTC has changed how we do our syllabi. So um, it's integrated directly into Canvas now. So if you go on the left, all the little things where you can navigate the course, you click course syllabus. It'll take you to this page. And here is all of your happy syllabus uh, information. Um, because it's integrated directly into Canvas, you can navigate by these tabs over here on the right to go to different sections of the syllabus. I'm not gonna read the syllabus to you. You're all in college, you can read. Um, but I am gonna go over some of the, kind of hit some of the highlights, hit some of the important stuff. So um, we don't have a room because it's an online class. Also, it's an asynchronous online class, which you may have heard the terms synchronous and asynchronous a lot during the pandemic. Um, and what that means is this class does not meet collectively at all. So we don't meet via Zoom as a group. We do everything individually on our own uh, timelines, and that's all asynchronous means, okay? Um, that does also mean, though, that it's really important that you keep up with things yourself, okay? Um... The way that I have it set up in Canvas, I will put things like lectures and, and things like that on your to-do list. So it will show up on the home page listed on the right, like upcoming things that you need to do. So even if it's not an assignment that you need to turn in, it'll still show up on your to-do list. So it should be pretty easy. I also have a schedule breakdown in the syllabus to, to show you what's going to happen all semester. Um, in terms of contact, please contact me via email. I know that most of you are going to forget that I just said that and send me messages in Canvas. I don't love that. I will reply to them, but I'll reply to them via email because I have them set up where they forward to my email. Um, the reason, one of the reasons that I like for you to contact me via email from your OTC email is because of a thing called FERPA. So because we're a collegiate institution because we're a college we have a set of regulations called FERPA in place that protect you that protect the student protect the student's privacy and they're really important um, and one of the things that they uh, dictate is that I cannot share information about your grade with you unless you are contacting me via your official OTC email address um, or we're speaking face-to-face -face in person. So it's easier if you just communicate with me 
via your email address at OTC, okay? It's also good practice to check your email regularly. That's just a good thing to do. Um, so when you contact me via email, please tell me which class you're in. Um, I'm good at learning people's names and, and kind of keeping you sorted. I have several people this semester who are in several different classes of mine, so please let me know which class you're talking about. I'm also teaching a lot of classes this semester. I'm teaching seven classes, which is a ton. Um, so it's, it's very helpful for me if you tell me what class you're in in the body of the email. Um, also, please don't spell my name incorrectly. I know my name is spelled very oddly, but please spell it correctly. Okay, so my contact information, my email address is rosenm at otc.edu. I am full-time at OTC now. Um, I previously was not, and now that I'm full-time, I have an office, so I have a place where you can come and find me. Um, my office is an NKM. Uh, it's NKM 130, and um, I have office hours there, which is just a regular time that I will always be in my office unless I'm sick or something, and then I'll let people know. But if you need to talk to me, you can come by during office hours. Um, they are Monday and Wednesday from 12.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, it's still maybe good to shoot me an email and make an appointment during those times, though you can just drop by. Um, but I have a lot of students this semester, so if I have other people coming at the same time, it's a little bit better if we schedule it. Um, if those time slots don't work for you at all, uh, you can email me and we can set up a time to meet outside of office hours or um, I can set up a time to Zoom with you. I can also do uh, office hours via Zoom. Uh, you do not have a book for this class. Um, there's a little bit of supplemental reading that I add, but it's mostly lecture based. Um, you do need uh, a computer with internet access. Um, and we have computer labs at OTC. We have the library that has computers at OTC. You also, this is kind of new and it's pretty rad. I've never heard of a school doing uh, this before, but I think every college should do it. The OTC bookstore now has laptops available for purchase. So you can use some of your aid and student loans and things like that to purchase a, a laptop through the OTC bookstore if you need to. Because this is an online class, it's really important that you have a, a reliable computer with internet access. There's also public libraries and things in town that you can use. So there are lots of places where that'll work, but just know that, I mean, it's pretty obvious it's an online class, but just so you know, that is important. This is the course catalog description for the class. Um, I did not write this, but basically this is a uh, history of art and we start at the beginning of the Renaissance, at the early Renaissance, and we go all the way up through contemporary art. Um, the objectives are pretty standard. Again, I'm not gonna read all this to you, you can read. We have our um, Core 42 outcomes, they're pretty standard now. I haven't put the breakdown of the grading in here yet. I'll do that tonight. I don't. I made all of these and then I didn't post all of them in the syllabi for some reason, but I'll, I'll get that posted. But um, basically you have a couple of different kinds of assignments in this class. One of them are discussion posts, one of them are um, flip grids, and then you have quizzes, and then uh, you have a final exam. And that's kind of it. And so if you do all of those things, you will do well in the class. I do recommend you take notes when you watch the lectures because it's kind of a lot of information. Um, as far as late work, you have one week past the due date of any given assignment to turn in the assignment. Um, and you lose a point if the assignment is later than that. Um, basically, if you need a longer extension, if something's going on, if you're sick, if something is happening, just email me and talk to me and we will figure it out. Um, I, I try to be very supportive of my students always and particularly it's a really stressful time to be a person, to be a person working and going to school. It's really difficult. Uh, we're in the middle of a crazy pandemic. So um, feel free to reach out to me if you need more time on something. I'm pretty good at working with students. Um, academic grievance. So if you think that I have graded you unfairly on something, or um, I've done something that you think is wrong or unfair or you're upset or something, please reach out to me. Um, I would hope that I'd be your first person to contact if, if something is, is upsetting you or something's going on. Um, I try to be pretty approachable for my students, so please email me or come to me first. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with that and you uh, don't think that that's a satisfying resolution, 
I've put my department chair, uh, Kat Alley's information here. So she's basically, she's the chair of my department. So she's basically my supervisor. And then our uh, supervisor over that is our, um, we're in the general education division. So the Dean of general education is Dr. Renner. So I put his information there as well. Um, attendance is kind of weird for online classes, I know, but um, I just like to give people a heads up just because this is an online class doesn't mean that you can like not check in on the class for weeks at a time. Um, I can see how often you log into the class on Canvas and not only can I see it, um, Dr. O'Connor, who's our uh, dean in charge of all things uh, attendance and that kind of related sort of issues, can see it. And so if you aren't checking into the class and it gets close to where it's it's getting toward uh, administrative withdrawal, meaning you haven't checked in in 14 days, um, I will get an email from Dr. O'Connor saying, I'm going to drop this person from your class because they haven't been participating. So if I notice that you haven't been like participating and turning things in on time and whatnot, and I haven't heard from you in a while, usually I try to reach out and email you and kind of check on you and make sure you're okay and, and see what I can do to support you, what we need to do to get you um, back on track. But just so you know, Attendance policy does still apply, even though it's an online class, not a seated class. So just be aware of that. Um, academic integrity, don't cheat. It's pretty easy, right? <laughs> okay. Um, disability support services. OTC has really fantastic uh, services and resources for students. So disability support services are great. Here's all the information for that. Here's the connection where you can get set up if you need assistance related to disability support services. I also have linked all these other related college resources. Um, one of the things I love about teaching at OTC is that it's a very students first kind of um, institution. Uh, OTC is very supportive of its students and pretty much anything that you might have a problem with there is someone um, whose job it is to help you, basically. So there's all kinds of support. There's uh, counseling available for students. There's LGBTQ resources. There's um, resources for pregnant students. There's Title IX. There's um, just all kinds of really good, helpful resources and people who are there. And you should take advantage of those people if you need them. So I just have all, all that is linked if you need that. Um, the other thing I do is I always put a schedule in the syllabus. Um, so since it's on Canvas, everything is pretty navigatable via Canvas and, and when things are due. But I've uh, been a student for a long time. I was in school for, uh, I was in college for nine years. I have three degrees, two of them are graduate degrees. So I spent a lot of time in classrooms and I've been teaching for over a decade. So I have you know, 20 years of being in college, either as a teacher or a student, basically. And so I have lots of experience based opinions on how I like things to be organized that are largely based on when I was a student. So one of the things I always really appreciated was when my professors had the whole semester kind of organized and laid out, I found it sort of anxiety reducing to know what was going to happen and have a, like a set of expectations on day one. So I do that for all of my classes. Um, my uh, husband, who's an English professor, thinks that's insane, but um, we're different. <laughs> so <laughs> you can go through and see what's going to happen. So because this is an online class, we don't have set days that we meet. So these dates are just the start of the week, and I have everything laid out week by week. And then this corresponds with when things are due, what week they're due during on Canvas, okay? But you'll always be able to see whatever the topic is, whatever we're looking at, and then also see um, what's due, what you need to be working on. Okay, so that's all laid out here so you can see the uh, semester all sorted out. Okay, let's go back over to the home page, which is the modules page. So this section that isn't published right now that says welcome is where this video will be posted. Um, I'll also post it in introductions. So you can see what I'm talking about. You have this coming up area over here on the home page, and that will tell you things that you are going to need to do in the near future. Um, in this class, everything is set up, uh, as I said, organized by the modules page. So in each module, you'll have information about the topic. So our first module beyond introductions is the Renaissance and Baroque. This is 
a huge section, so it's split up into a lot of subheaders. So all of these that have this little page icon, that's where you can find the lecture and the notes. So here's notes, and then sometimes I'll have uh, some articles that are just kind of extra information. I also give you a PDF of the images um, that I talk about in the lecture, and then you click here and you have my lecture. Um, all my lectures are on a YouTube video, or excuse me, are posted as video links to YouTube. I don't know, it sounded like I was, you get what I mean. Um, and on my YouTube channel, I have a playlist for each class. So Art History 2 has its own playlist on my channel. My channel is just my name. So you can go there and see um, all of the related lectures all together, but I also link them in each one. So in this first section, we don't have a flip grid for every single lecture because there's a lot of them, but we do have one for the first lecture. Okay, and Flipgrid is just, you click on this, it'll bring up a link where it will prompt you to record a video response. And basically, after you watch the lecture, I want to know that you watched the lecture. So I want your response, it's under two minutes, and it's just you telling me things that you learned in the lecture, thought were interesting, liked, didn't like, questions you have, but just to demonstrate to me that you have actually watched the material, okay? Um, and then also in each module, you'll have um, a discussion, okay? So in the discussion, I will assign you a topic, and I haven't done that yet, but I will. I will assign you a topic that I want you to research. And what this is about is I used to assign in art history a formal essay. So we'd have a big test and we'd have a formal research paper. And what I found is people don't really like the research paper. Um, it stressed people out. They spent all their time worrying about citations and, and research and just kind of freaked out about it and didn't really seem to be learning that much. Um, so I replaced that assignment with this one. So for each module, you'll have a topic. And what you're going to do is read a bunch of things about the topic, okay? And then you're going to post in the discussion board and teach your classmates and me about the topic, okay? So it's you don't have to have formal citations, right? It's very um, informal. It's just like you're telling us stuff that you learned, okay? So it makes it a little bit um, lower pressure and more conversational and less formal. And I have found that people tend to learn a lot more. So you make your post about your topic and then you have to comment on at least two topics by your peers, okay? And we'll do that every module. And then you'll have a quiz. The quizzes are small, they're only worth uh, 10 points and they're only over things that were covered in the lectures. Okay, so this continues on throughout the semester. So we have all our different sections. Um, I do have a little bit of extra credit here. Um, and I will have things about the final exam as well. Uh, okay, so let's look at what we're doing today. So introductions is exactly what it sounds like. I want you to introduce yourself to us. So here it says, if you haven't yet, please go check out the welcome video, which if you were looking at this this morning, you were probably like, where's the video? What is she even talking about? This is the video <laughs> and I will link that here as well. So what I want you to do is make a post about yourself. And here are the things that I wanna know. I wanna know your name, especially if your name is different than how it shows up in Canvas, which for some people it is. I have several uh, Nicholases this semester who go by Nick, for example. I have some people that go by their middle names. I have people who go by a totally different name than how they're listed in Canvas. So just tell us what your name is. Um, and then tell me your pronouns. And then I'd like to know, um, your area of study. A lot of people don't have an area of study or don't know what their area of study is yet. That's fine. Just tell us that. If it's a transfer degree, just tell us you're getting your transfer degree. Um, maybe tell us what you think you want to do with that later. If you're just getting your Gen Ed uh, Associates of Arts, that's totally fine. Um, but just give us a little information about what, what you're studying. Um, uh, where are you from? Who is your favorite visual artist if you have one? Not everybody does, but you might after this class. That could be a goal. Um, your favorite band or musician or who, someone you've been listening to a lot lately. Um, and then the biggest one for me is why are you taking this class? And I don't mean for that to sound confrontational at all, because it's not. It's more just curious. Tell me your why. For most of you, it's that you need a humanities credit. And I know that, and that's cool. That doesn't hurt my feelings or anything. 
the thing I want to know is why this class? Why are you taking Art History 2 with me um, if you're just doing it for the humanities credit instead of taking like theater with John or music with Phil or something like that. So just tell me what drew you to this particular class, because that's something I'm interested in genuinely. I'm just curious how students get to the class and, and what drew them to it. And also it can help me tailor some information. So if there's something really specific that you're super interested in, and I don't usually cover it in this class, I will cover it. I will look it up and if it's not something I know about and figure out how to incorporate it into a lecture because I, I really want to engage with you and get you interested in the material of the class. Um, this is worth points. Um, and you can also, if you want, share a picture of yourself, of your dog or cat or pet, um, of your favorite artwork or if you make artwork, of your artwork, whatever. You can share images if you want. You don't have to. Um, you do need to read everyone's posts and you do need to find someone who you have at least one thing in common with and comment to them. So reply to their post and tell them about the thing you have in common. I will go first. I would not ask you to share information that I wouldn't share myself. So my name is Megan and you can call me Megan because you're in college and that's fine. So you can call me Megan. If you email me and are addressing me as Megan, please don't spell my name incorrectly. I know it's spelled oddly, but it is here. You can see how it's spelled, M-E-G-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. If you're not comfortable calling me Megan, that's also totally fine. You can call me Ms. Rosen, or you can call me Instructor Rosen or Professor Rosen. That's all fine. I don't really like Mrs. It's not my favorite. Uh, my husband and I don't have the same last name, so it's kind of weird. It doesn't really make sense for us. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I My area of study, I have a couple. So I have, uh, as I mentioned before, I was in school for a long time. I have three different uh, degrees. My first one is a four-year Bachelor of Arts degree, and it's in art history. I majored in art history, which is good for you. You're in uh, the class that was my major field of study as an undergraduate. Um, I also minored in fine arts, um, English, and global studies. Um, my, I have a master's degree. I have an MA in studio art and theory. And uh, then my terminal degree, which doesn't mean a degree that will kill you, but it's the highest level of education in a field. So for some people, that's a PhD. For some people, it's an MFA. There are a couple of different things. For my field, um, which is art, it's an MFA. Okay, so I have an MA in studio art and theory, and then I went on and got my terminal degree, which is a Master of Fine Arts, an MFA in painting from California College of the Arts in San Francisco. Um, I'm originally from Springfield. I moved back here in 2018. Um, I've been teaching for 10 years. I started teaching in 2011. Um, let's see. I have lots of favorite visual artists, but um, one of my go-tos is Helen Frankenthaler, and I have a picture of her with some of her paintings posted here below. She's a second wave abstract expressionist, and we'll talk about her when we get into modernism this semester. I listen to lots of different kinds of music. Um, at the time I typed this, I was listening to Fiona Apple's Fetch the Bolt Cutters a lot. I've also recently been listening to Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill a lot. It's the 25th anniversary of that album, and I just saw her on the 25th anniversary tour associated with that in Arkansas, and she's rad, and it's a very nostalgic album for me. Um, what else? Why? What's my why? Why am I here? I'm uh, here because art history is one of my specialties. It's also one of my very favorite things to teach. I love teaching people about art and art-related terms and artists and its history. I get really excited about it. I'm a big nerd about art history, so I get really into it, so expect that. Um, at OTC, oh, and I'm full-time at OTC now. This is my first semester full-time at OTC. Previously, I was an adjunct, so I taught at OTC, MSU, Drury, sometimes the Art Museum, sometimes the Missouri Fine Arts Academy. Now I am full-time at OTC, so I'm exclusively here for, for you, you all. Um, and at OTC, I teach also um, Art History One. I also teach, which you don't have to take those in order. You can take Art History One after this class, after Art History Two, if you want. I teach art and experience, which is a kind of uh, art appreciation class. I teach drawing one, drawing two, and foundations of design. Um, and I think that's kind of all the things. So here's a picture of Helen Frankenthaler with some of her paintings. Here are my three cats. I need to update this uh, about me post because I now also have a dog. But here's Mr. Mustachios, Uma the Puma, and Mimosa. And then I have a seven-month-old Rottweiler puppy named Marcella Moose. So Marcy Moose, she is very silly. It's an old 
uh, it's probably about a year old headshot of me. I've changed my hair pretty often and I've recorded the lectures for um, the online version of this class at different times, so I have a lot of different hair. Um, I'll change it probably more this semester, so my hair is not super consistent. Sometimes I have glasses, sometimes I don't. I'm very all over the place with how I look. Um, but I pretty much always have uh, pointy nails, so that's a good go-to. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's me. So I look forward to getting to know each of you. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on um, in our early assignments here, so up in this introduction section, is looking at art. So for looking at art, you'll click here, and there's a video, and this is, uh, I think, the only video I post this semester that isn't me. So this is uh, two art historians, and they're talking about visual analysis of a famous painting, of an artwork. So I want you to watch that, and then I've listed what I think of as the basic steps of visual analysis. There are these five steps. And I've also attached this infographic about how to do a visual analysis. So I want you to watch that, read that, read this, and then I want you to go over here to your first assignment outside of the introduction, and that's looking at art and practice. So you're going to click this and there's an image of a painting, and you're going to look at this and then armed with all this information you have about visual analysis, you're then going to write a visual analysis of this painting. So it's short, it'll be pretty short, pretty brief, um, and I do not want you to Google Im image search this. If you happen to know who painted this and the title of this, um, you can include that. I'd be sort of surprised. It's not exactly obscure, but it's not a super famous painting in terms of how paintings go. It's my favorite painting from the National Gallery in London where I studied Renaissance painting, so that's why I choose it. I talk about it in a lecture in uh, this class. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it after everyone's turned in their visual analysis, too. Okay. And then after that, um, get into some early renaissance and start watching some lectures and telling me about things. Um, I will get your discussion assignments posted probably tomorrow. Okay, so today's Monday. Um, so I will probably get them posted tomorrow, which is technically the first day of class, September 7th. Okay, welcome to Art History 2. I'm super excited to get to know each of you this semester. I love this class. I hope you'll love it too. Um, and yeah, have a great rest of your day.